y'all, welcome back to my channel and happy 2023. Or similar to when I wished everyone a holiday, just 2023. I think we can all probably agree that none of us are really a uh, declaring 2023 our year we're all afraid that something bad's gonna happen so it's just it's just a it's just another year it's just another turn around the sun and we're just gonna keep on keeping on out here making the best of it as things come now somehow four months has once again passed if my math is correct if my YouTube schedule is correct, which means it is once again time for an empties video. And because my last one was so egregiously long, I thought that I would Just a quick aside here, if you can hear water, it's because it's raining outside and the sump pump is going. I'm gonna go close that door. No momento. I don't know about any of you, but uh, when I hear consistent water running, I have to pee. Anyways, back to the empties. Last empties video was egregiously long. The empties video before that, same, same. So this time I thought that I would just kind of not necessarily curate down my empties. I still have a bag under my desk here and maybe I'll do like two empties back to back. So we'll kind of do like skincare, hair care. But today's empties video is more specifically going to focus on some makeup empties and a whole wackadoodle of minis. And because I was going through my makeup collection a little bit earlier today as I was sort of doing my last bit of tidying before my holiday ends. I also have a bit of a declutter here that if we have time, I'll go through and just let y'all know what I am kicking to the curb. So I'm gonna just dig in and we're gonna start with the makeup because there's only three and none of these should really come as a surprise. Although one of the products is something that I haven't talked about in quite a while, but I picked it up and had it in my makeup bag for the weekend that just passed, which was like New Year's Eve weekend. I, you know, put together my typical kind of weekend bag and I put this product in there because I hadn't used it in a while. And as I was using it on my like New Year's Eve makeup, which wasn't anything special, I was like, oh, this is, this is done. <laughs> it's so dry. There's almost nothing in here. I'm scraping the sides. So yay, I have something to include in my empties. And we're going to get there soon. So the first I have mentioned a couple of times I've been using it in quite a number of my latest makeup videos and it is the Maybelline New York Green Edition mascara and if you recall this is a mascara that I actually quite liked at the beginning I would say that it was pretty wet and I didn't love it when I first opened it but as it was as it kind of aged and got a little bit drier it was lovely and it's got the kind of brush that I want nice big brush kind of curved, so hugged the lashes in a really nice way and gave me the kind of chunky lash that I usually prefer. So all in all, a great drugstore mascara and it's just nice to see brands like Maybelline kind of going in the green direction. Then next up is the e.l.f. Big Mood Mascara, which is kind of a crowd favorite these days shouldn't be any surprise this makes it into my rotation quite often and i just i love it it's great it was originally a dupe for the bite upswing is that what it was called but now bite is no longer so we just have <laughs> elf big mood and it could have ended up worse we could have ended up in a worse scenario what ended up happening was that we got a really great drugstore mascara that did exactly what the higher end did. So can't complain. And it's definitely going to be a repurchase because I'm really enjoying it. Although the mascara I'm using right now is another drugstore mascara. I think I mentioned it or used it in my last video. It's the Essence kind of uh, lash out loud or something. It's great. Um, and then my last makeup empty this video is the Danessa Myricks Vision Flush in toasted almond and I'm honestly pretty sad that this is 
finished. But like I said earlier, when I was using this on the weekend, I'm not sure how well you can see, but like I'm, I'm scraping the edges here for product. Like the brush is coming out pretty much completely dry. There are still some in there, but like if I look in the tube, there's pretty much nothing left, which is just kind of exciting that, you know, I've had this for quite some time now, but I didn't let it go to waste. I used the entire thing. And I think any of the Danessa Myricks Vision Flushes that I've purchased are definitely repurchases. It just so happens that I've got, you know, quite a lot of things in my collection right now and I don't need this, but it's a beautiful bronzer shade for me. And when the time comes, it will definitely make its way back into my collection because, this is truly just an exceptional product and it's something that I use on my cheeks and also on my eyes as kind of just a one and done eyeshadow and I love it. I love it so much. All right, now we're just going to jump right into the minis. Although I'm noticing that I included something in here that isn't a mini, but it is worth mentioning uh, just because it's I think the only one of its kind. And this is the Garnier Whole Blends Shampoo Bar. I have a new ring light and it's very bright. So I'll bring it back here so you can properly see. This is the Oat Delicacy for delicate hair. Smelled great, very inexpensive at the drugstore. I think this was like something like $5.99 Canadian. Lasts up to two months, I would agree. And you know, 94% plant-based plastic free obviously it just comes in a cardboard box which you recycle and then you're you've just got a shampoo bar and I used this all the way up and really had no complaints for an inexpensive drugstore option for shampoo bars I thought it was great and something that I will very likely repurchase if I'm in a pinch I have a couple others that I'm working on right now um the shampoo bar that's currently in my shower is from the brand Etique I believe that's how you pronounce it. Uh, and I love it. It's really, really wonderful. Does a great job cleaning my hair. What I am noticing though, is that I don't love traveling with the shampoo bars and champ like solid conditioners. It's, it's just a little messy. So that's something that I definitely have to get used to. Like I have the kind of little metal containers that you would bring. Um, I think they're all from Lush because that's kind of how this whole journey into the solid shampoo and conditioner bars started. But I just, it ends up getting messy and then if you don't leave them out to dry properly then they just kind of get congealed and mushy in the canister so it's there's a bit of a give and take I'm still kind of getting used to the whole situation I ended up purchasing a shampoo like a bottled shampoo to just leave at my boyfriend's house because I was getting so sick and tired of like lugging shampoo bars back and forth every single weekend. It was just a little bit ridiculous, but I do have one in my personal shower and I do love having that in my shower. I go back and forth sometimes between just like regular shampoos in bottles because there's brands that I want to try, but as a concept and as someone who is always trying to be mindful of waste production, the solid shampoo bars and conditioners are a great option and they are very effective. We're kind of, you know, a number of years down that road. And now that brands like Garnier are kind of picking it up, like we've got the kind of technology to make something that's really effective and that isn't going to leave your hair gummy. And obviously that can be produced in a way that is quite affordable. Like you don't have to go out and buy a $25 shampoo bar. You can get something at the drugstore. So I really appreciate that. Now, on to the rest of my empties. We're gonna start with deodorant because it's just right at the top and no one should be surprised. It is the Native Deodorant Mini in Sugar Cookie and I believe I have kind of waxed poetic ad nauseum about this deodorant, about this scent specifically. It is wonderful. It was unfortunately a limited edition scent. I believe Sugar Cookie was last year and this year it's like toasted marshmallow and vanilla or something which is the one I'm currently using also love that anything in this kind of like gourmand cookie baked good scent just brings me very much joy and in this specific scent and with the native deodorant formula I am finding that I am pretty much always smelling good I have uh, anxious sweat stress sweat as many people do and so when that happens there's like no deodorant that can kind of battle against my stress sweat it just is very potent but otherwise when I'm you know not in that zone of like super stress super anxiety the native deodorant is just 
savior, a friend, and I love a mini because it's just so easy to put in your purse or your backpack. I don't know if they do minis in their plastic free packaging, but that would be ideal because obviously that would be a little bit more environmentally friendly. But otherwise I have absolutely no complaints about these. Now we can go into a couple of pharmacy products, which I have spoken about before. I have a tendency to buy the duo uh, of the pharmacy, goodness, the pharmacy deep sweep duo. I believe it's the, this 2% BHA pore cleaning toner. And then I think it's the, one of the cream cleansers. And I really, really, really like this toner. It's very effective. It's very gentle. I love the scent. I had no idea that I was going to love the scent of Moringa so much, but I really do. And it's just something that I continue to purchase. And again, I am one of those people that loves a mini because I am kind of in the situation where I'm going back and forth every single weekend. So it's just, it's nice to have. And yes, I could be using, you know, travel bottles and just kind of refilling those. I'll get there eventually. It's also an aesthetic thing. I could come up with a myriad of excuses. The point is I just, for right now, it's just more convenient and e there's an ease of use thing going on with having the little, the, the mini sizes and it's just something that I really enjoy. And I also like to go that route because then I can try a product and I'm not locked into a huge financial commitment because what if I don't like it? Now, sometimes of course I can hand things off to my mom or my sister or other folks who might like the product better than I do and I have done that before and you know I, I like kind of having a collection of things that are unopened because you never know when you're gonna have to give someone a gift. Skincare and hair care and all of that kind of stuff goes a very long way in terms of gifts because it's about self-care and it's just sometimes things that people might not invest in for themselves. So I like to give those things as gifts. So if I've always got extras, it's fine. And if you've got minis, again, it's a very low stakes game if you're giving something as a gift and it's the first time that person has used the brand. All of that to say, the Pharmacy Deep Sweep Toner is wonderful. I love it and it's something that I will continue to purchase again and again. And I do really appreciate that even in the smaller size, it's in glass packaging, which makes it much more recyclable than some of the other products. So obviously I would just take off the cap and the little dropper insert there and then pop this into regular recycling. And we're actually going to get into that at the end, just the whole recycling issue because I kind of have an update again since my last <laughs> MD's video. Then my next pharmacy product here is the Mini Honey Potion Hydrating Mask. Sorry, Renewing anti Accident hydration mask, which is the really, really delicious mask that actually looks like honey. And I like how I'm showing you the inside of an empty jar as if you can see the texture. No, you can't see inside of my mind. It's the one that actually looks like kind of golden creamed honey. And then when you rub it into your skin, it warms up and kind of, it doesn't emulsify, but it turns, almost goes like foamy and is an absolute delightful mask. And is again, just something that I love to have in a mini. I really struggle getting through like large size masks. So if I have a mini, it's just something nice that I can treat myself to. And I also don't love masking. So I'm fine with having the miniature size because when I finish it, I'm like, oh, I didn't let this go to waste. And if I wanna buy it again, I can. Otherwise, once again, no big deal. But I also like the mini glass jars, and these are ones that I do use time and again for any kind of travel. Uh, I have one I think that I turned into like a little soap browse container. So this is something that I will actually put over on this side of my desk, and I will keep it. I'll take off the label, and it's something that I can just use for any kind of travel, and we can then avoid minis moving forward. Now I've got two of the exact same product here. Uh, they came in two different sets. It is the Biosant Squalene and Omega Repair Cream, which I have talked about before, and is just truly a product that I fell in love with, and it was very surprising. I absolutely love the way that this smells. It is lingering in the jars a little bit, but I was also just so pleasantly and deeply surprised by the effectiveness of this cream, the way that it sits on my skin. I was using it as a, 
like kind of last stage night cream. Sometimes I would use it in the morning. It's winter now, so this is something that I would use probably day and night, whereas when I first started using it, it was kind of like the end of the summer. So it would have been a little bit too heavy for my skin during the day, but it's just something that is truly, truly lovely and wouldn't completely disappear by the time I woke up in the morning. And I'm kind of in that position right now, trying to find a night cream that doesn't completely get absorbed either through my skin or like through my pillowcases overnight. It's very, very dry here in the winter. We have a, like here at my house, we've got hot water heating at my boyfriend's house. It's like forced air. And I don't think it really matters one way or another. It's always going to be very, very dry air when the heat is on here in Ontario in the winter time, unless you've got a humidifier. And I've been trying to run one in my room just to kind of mitigate some of that. But I'm really, really having a hard time finding something that is keeping my face fully hydrated. And now that I'm also, you know, doing a little bit more winter sport, I'm out snowboarding at least once a weekend, I'm getting wind whipped. So my forehead and my chin and the tip of my nose are getting a little bit beaten by the wind. And so I'm really needing a like heavy hydrator at the end of the night. And again, something that doesn't just completely disappear halfway through the night and then I'm waking up being like, <sighs> so I'm, this was definitely something that was very, very effective. And unfortunately, I just don't have any more of these little jars. I haven't yet purchased the big size, but when all of my other current creams run out, this is definitely going to be high on the list for repurchase because it is so effective. And I have been really enjoying every single time I use it. Then I've got, this is, I guess we can call this a mini, but it was really more of a sample. And I think this was in one of the big Sephora, like green clean packages. And it is the Tata Harper Restorative Eye Cream. It's one of the few Tata Harper products that I've ever tried and I kind of have been veering away from Tata Harper just because it is very, very expensive. But what I liked about this as a sample is that it did come with this little like, I don't know what you call this, but kind of like an eyedropper tip. So it, you're not like dipping your finger in and wasting product and I really appreciate kind of the delivery system of an eye cream like this because you can literally just squeeze out the exact amount you need and with an eye cream you usually don't need that much because it's only going here. Sure you could use it elsewhere and I have done that with other eye creams that come in like a little pot that I end up not liking very much and I don't want to waste the product so I just kind of use it wherever but I really really did like this product and I made it last. <laughs> I think I actually had this pretty much all summer and into September and I really loved it and I don't know what the normal delivery system is for like the regular size of this product but once again if I run out of any of my eye creams this is something that I probably would reconsider purchasing because it was truly truly lovely. Then similarly, I have, I think this is probably a sample size. I can't remember and I don't remember what it came in. Um, it is the Three Ships Dew Drops Mushroom Hyaluronic Acid and Vitamin C Serum. Now I have tried a number, oh, this light is so bright. I don't know how to there. I've used a number of Three Ships products, have so far loved many of them and have mm, feelings about a couple others. One of them is in my bathroom right now and it's taking me forever to use because I just don't love it. And similarly, I think for me, a serum really has to blow me out of the water. It has to prove its weight in gold for me to actually love using it. Otherwise, I just don't really understand the point. I have to see results in a serum for me to understand its merit. And with this one, unfortunately, I personally just didn't see the point. I was like, what are you doing? Are you giving me more hydration? Are you making me dewier? I don't really need to be dewier, but you would think with this like kind of ingredient list, the point is to be extra hydrated and I just didn't really get that feeling. So it's definitely not gonna be a repurchase for me, but it's always fun to try new things 
especially if they don't irritate your skin. And it's, you know, a brand that I'm happy to support as well. Then this is one that I just finished up, I think this past weekend, and I bought it in one of those cute little kits. It was on, the kit was on sale. So it was e even more of like a low risk purchase and experiment. It's from the brand Bloom Effects, which is a cute little Dutch brand. And this is the Royal Tulip Cleansing Jelly. So a very, very, very gentle cleanser. I would say more like a jelly to milk cleanser. So you would, when you squeeze it out, it has that clear jelly appearance, but as soon as it hits water, it emulsifies and gets really, really milky. So I was using this in the shower. I was using this to kind of as like a very, very gentle second cleanse at night. You could very well use this in the morning as your only cleanse because it was so gentle. Yeah, it was lovely. It didn't blow me away by any means, but it was just a nice product to have in my overnight bin for washing my face. And that's not all that. <laughs> um, then there was this, which came in another various kit. I think this one I got, it was in some kind of big package kit from the Green Jungle Beauty Shop. And this is the Jane Scrivener Whipped Butter Polish facial exfoliator and it's just this teeny tiny jar I think it came with a scrubby or something and I don't know what to think about this it was fine it had a really nice scent but it was almost I don't love a wash or a facial scrub that like leaves residue on my skin and this definitely did I like my skin. I don't want my skin to feel stripped when I wash it or if I'm using a physical exfoliator, but I also don't want it to feel filmy afterwards. I want whatever is on my face to wash clean. And there are plenty of products out there that do that and still leave your face feeling very, very soft and very, very hydrated. And you can feel their effectiveness, but they don't leave that like skimmy feeling like you've got an extra layer of skin. And for me personally, that's what this product did. And I mean, fine, it came in a big kit that was, you know, well worth its weight. So no love lost there and just not something that I will even entertain purchasing in the future. Now the rest of my mini empties are all from Glow Recipe and I'm fairly certain that in I think my last favorites video, I'll put it here. I was basically like, apparently I've been sleeping on Glow Recipe and no one told me. So I had purchased the previous, so last year's 2022 version of the Glow Recipe Fruit Babies kit. Um, and they actually just released a new one, which I'm very excited to check out because there's some new products in there. And so far I pretty much loved everything from Glow Recipe and couldn't be happier with trying this brand. And I can't believe it took me until this year to finally pull the trigger and try Glow Recipe. Um, it's not just cute packaging. It's fully just like wonderful, wonderful products. And I actually just finished this one last night, which is the Avocado Melt Retinol Eye Cream. Similar to the Tata Harper, I was like genuinely impressed. And I find it very difficult for an eye cream to impress me. It's kind of how I feel about serums sometimes. Like, what are you actually doing? Are you doing anything? Are you truly effective? Or are we just paying $85 for like five milliliters of product? <laughs> but I, I really enjoyed this. It was a delight to use. Again, the packaging is just all so wonderfully aesthetic. The eye cream comes in a little glass jar. It's just, it was lovely. And it made me want to have the full size. So I'm not sure what else I can say about it, but it was just such a wonderful experience. And yeah, really, really impressed with Glow Recipe as a whole. Then the next empty is the Blueberry Bounce Gentle Cleanser. I've talked about this a number of times before, so I'm not gonna get into it really today. Great cleanser, very, very gentle. Didn't sting my eyes, is something that I would repurchase again and again. And I just, I love, the little cute packaging. It served me very well on all of my overnights, so loved that. Then there is the Watermelon Glow Pink Juice Moisturizer. This was such a lovely, wonderful moisturizer to have throughout the summer and early fall when it was still quite warm. Beautiful daily moisturizer for my skin type that left me feeling hydrated, but nothing was weighed down or heavy. And I was genuinely surprised because I think one of the reasons why I 
kind of didn't go towards a glow recipe was because I don't necessarily love all artificial fruit scents. And I wasn't really sure that I was going to enjoy the watermelon fragrance that was so heavily touted in so much of this line. But it's actually very nice and subtle and like not overwhelming at all and it doesn't smell too fake. And it, I never felt like it lingered too long, so it's definitely something that I really enjoyed. And similar to the other two products, I would repurchase this. And again, really appreciate that even in the mini size, they went with glass packaging. Because it just means once I actually clean this out properly, it will be very easy to recycle. Then there is the kind of companion product to the moisturizer, which is the Watermelon Glow Niacinamide. Dew drops. Now, unlike the Three Ships Dew Drops, I actually did find this effective and lovely, and it just felt great on my skin, and I did feel like I saw there was like a physical visual difference in my skin after using that. So this is an instance where a serum actually impressed me, and I found value in it. And again, glass packaging that's a point in its column. Now the other serum in last year's Fruit Babies kit is the Plum Plump Hyaluronic Serum for deep hydration and glow and unlike the watermelon one I didn't really feel like this was very effective and I also noticed that if I used a toner or even if I didn't use a toner but my skin was still damp from washing and then I used this it would almost like emulsify and kind of get like sudsy which I didn't really like or understand and I just for me personally felt that the plum one was much less effective than the watermelon serum. I didn't hate it it's just you know it, it didn't rise into my favorites categories the way that the other ones did but I have a few other glow recipe products in my collection right now that I'm kind of itching to try and very excited and, and again I'm <laughs> I cannot wait to get my hands on this year's Fruit Babies kit because there's just some other products that they've stuck in there and very, very excited. Now, we are only at 30 minutes, which hopefully will be less time by the time I've edited this. <laughs> so I'm gonna just quickly, apologies for the noise, jump through my kind of declutter here. And most of these are being decluttered due to age. A few of them are due to just simply disliking them or not using them in time before they went bad. This one is almost an empty and it's it doesn't meet any of the other criteria for being decluttered. Uh, it just is kind of like a personal flaw that I have that caused this to sort of no longer be worth using. And it's the little mini Freck OG freckle pen. It's pretty much done. I have used the crap out of this. But, and again, I'm not sure if you can see it because of how bright the lights are. There is a split in the lid here, which is something that continues to happen to me. And I have like a one-way halt grip. And I just, I think I have this fear that like, I'm not closing things tightly enough. So I really crank them shut. And then as a result, constantly bust the lids on my products. I did that with one of my original Kosas concealers. And then after a while, you're just like, there's oxygen getting in there and it's like going to leak in bacteria and just things are gonna go bad from there. <laughs> so that is pretty much the only reason why I'm getting rid of this because of this crack. And I know that it's just like letting air in there and just like gonna get gross. There would still be some use to this otherwise, but I just don't really wanna risk it. And I don't want my one of my favorite products to like, I don't know give me blemishes or an infection or something because it wasn't sealed properly. Now the next product that I'm decluttering is the Kosas Brow Pencil. And this is the shade Medium Brown. And I'm sad because it's such beautiful, wonderful packaging, but I just didn't use it. I don't use this kind of brow pencil anymore or brow product. And again, I'm not sure if you can see this, like there's still so much in here but it's no longer brown. It's got that like white cast on the outside, which just feels like it's gone bad and is no longer safe or good to put on my skin. So sadly, that is being discarded. Similarly, and I chatted about this in my last video, I was so excited to have found the Glossier Cookie Butter Balm.com, but after using it a couple of times, I was like, hmm, it smells fine, 
but there is something off about this texture and I don't think this is good anymore, which is truly a tragedy because not a lot of product got used. There's still so much in this, but that's something that's going on your lips, which is inevitably going into your mouth and then into your body. And the fact that there just is something off about the texture, like it's just gotten a little oilier, which to me suggests that it is going rancid if it hasn't already. I just, I need to part with it. It breaks my heart, but my health comes before this. Then I have another two products that I've just been holding on to for way too long and they're open so I don't even have like I can't even claim that they're still worth using or safe to use. The first is a very old Bite Beauty lipstick in the shade Flag Red which truly is a beautiful beautiful red but this was opened, it was used, it's been open for years, like well before the pandemic, which was probably like that I think is the, <laughs> the threshold for keeping any kind of product like this. And I think it's just time to part ways with this sadly, especially because if I did use it on camera, I would have to apologize profusely for using something that is no longer available. And I also would need to apologize profusely to myself for using something that is very likely bad. The next is another lipstick. Actually, all of the rest of these are lip products. And it is the Kosas Lipstick. I don't even know what these are called anymore, if they even make these anymore. But it's in the shade Thrillist. So an orangier version of the one I just showed you. And again, it has been open for a very long time. It has been used. But I think the last time I used this was before I moved home. So I was still living in Toronto. It was early days of the pandemic. We are now in 2023. It's been open and used for too long and I had it for like at least a year and a half prior to that. So like time to say goodbye. Then I have a ColourPop lip gloss, the Ultra Glossy Lip. It is from the Sailor Moon collab, which is basically the only reason why I bought it. It is virtually still full and while very pretty on the lips and like it still smells fine, I don't love the applicator. It's like literally a brush and not a doe foot, which is just what year is this, you know? Um, and it also is just so outrageously sticky, like uncomfortably sticky, like your lips almost stick together. And that's just not what anybody wants anymore in a lip gloss. So sorry, Sailor Moon, I love you dearly but there are better things in my collection. And then the next is this House Labs Atomic Shake Lip Lacquer in the shade Red Coral Shine. Another product that is virtually brand new, but from the moment I opened it, it literally smells like paint or varnish or like, yeah. It smells like paint. I don't wanna put that on my mouth, which again is going to go into my mouth and then into my body. Why does it smell like that? Why does it have to literally smell like paint. No. No, that's not okay. And I also didn't like the way that this sat on my lips. It like didn't really adhere to my lips properly, even with like scrubbing and making sure that they were dry and like not too sticky with another product underneath. It just, it didn't look good. This is a shade that I have traditionally loved, but overall I just wasn't impressed with this product. And I, it's a regret more than anything because I shouldn't have pulled the trigger on purchasing this. It was definitely something that was impulsive. Similarly, this is another one that was an impulse buy because it looked so beautiful online, but it was such a mistake and such a letdown because it literally did nothing special. So it is a lip balm that has this beautiful shimmery kind of orange shade to it, which I thought would translate to the lips. I thought that it would translate to a beautiful kind of shimmery, obviously transparent or translucent shade on the lips. I wasn't expecting like vibrant orange, but I was expecting some kind of color payoff when the inside looks like this, but no, nothing. And it's not even like it made my lips feel or look particularly good. So it was just a very expensive product for literally no reason. And it's the Lepar Tangerine Face and Lip Balm. I don't know what you would use this on your face for, maybe unless you were like had porcelain colored skin, but I don't. So this does nothing other than like maybe put on a highlight and that's not my jam. 
so I just got sick of looking at it. I tried to like leave it out on my vanity to encourage me to use it more often and it was just frustrating me because I was like this doesn't do anything. If I want a lip balm I have so many other lip balms that didn't cost me an arm and a leg that actually do a good job and still make my lips look good. Like there is kind of a glossy effect to it and yeah so overall just kind of a regret and I'm I feel bad about that but you know what it's the start of the new year so it's kind of nice to just let all of this go just move on without any regrets and know that I am letting go of things that no longer serve me these some of these things certainly spark joy and that's why they're empty and well loved and the ones that I'm decluttering no longer spark joy and there's a sense of relief with coming to the conclusion that I need to get rid of them now that being said, I have to come to, I guess, not a conclusion, um, but I have to just be honest that since my last empties video, I have not repurchased the TerraCycle box. Now that is not because I don't think it's worth it. It's just that I haven't got around to it and then time slipped by. And now I'm approaching a period of time where I'm going to be looking at a move soon and I don't want to move with garbage. So whenever I move and whenever I'm settled, I will be purchasing a TerraCycle box at that time when I, you know, kind of have my feet under me financially because a move is always very expensive. I will be repurchasing my TerraCycle box then and whenever I do the empties at that point, I can honestly say that those empties will be recycled properly. At this point in time, the empties that I have will sadly be most likely wish cycled. Um, I will do my best to make sure that they are disposed of correctly and to the best of my ability, but I just wanted to be honest that I don't have that TerraCycle box yet. And so this round of empties and beauty use won't be as environmentally conscious as I would have liked. I hope you can uh, otherwise, you know, we are into the new year and there are, it's kind of a weird start to the new year. I don't know if everyone else is feeling this way. We're in Mercury retrograde, so that's one thing. But the other is just that I think we came out of last year realizing, out of the last couple of years, realizing how important rest is and work-life balance is and no longer compromising for the sake of a just a job is and like the importance of our internal personal lives and all of the ways in which our internal personal lives, our home lives outweigh and are more important than work. Obviously work is important because that's what pays the bills and keeps the roof over our heads and allows us to live the lifestyles that we like. But I think more and more we're moving away from the expectation that like you have to work an 80 hour week. What's more important is spending time with yourself and with your family and your loved ones and having lived experiences and being able to turn off from work at the end of the day and not be bombarded with emails and text messages and you know not constantly be stressing and all of your emotional and physical energy goes towards a job and then there's nothing left for you or the things that you truly love at the end of the day and i'm really trying to go into this year with that state of mind knowing that you know my job is a little bit more than just a job but i also have some firm boundaries that i'm going to be drawing there because i have so many other things that i want to accomplish personally and my job just can't always, my, my job can no longer come first. I come first. And I hope that more and more people are kind of coming to that realization as well. Like you are not just a worker bee, you are a human being with a rich inner life that deserves attention and that deserves your time and dedication and passion and your energy, <laughs> uh, that our, our energy and all of those things shouldn't just be directed to this one thing. We are so much more than cogs in the machine and I just, I want everyone to kind of continue to move through the start of this new year with that in mind that you are worth more than your job description and your job title and that's what we should all kind of be, be looking at, I think. Anyways, 
I hope you enjoyed this little empties video. I hope it was a little bit shorter than normal because it is the start of the new year and not all of us are as energized as we should be and attention spans are still slim to none. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and if you are new here and you managed to make it all the way through this video and you liked what you saw, I really hope that you decide to become part of the Land Fam and you can go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. I've said this many times in the last couple videos, but I'm really going to try to be a little bit more consistent with my videos. Things have just been a little bit kooky and we're trying. We're trying our best. We are, we are doing our best to just come on here and be with you guys more often. So hopefully you will see me in the next one, which is only a week away. So the next one will be next week. Will it happen? Okay, that that's everything. <laughs> I'm gonna shush. I'm gonna drink some water and I am gonna let y'all go. And thank you once again for being here, for sticking out this journey with me. Love y'all so much. See you next time.